Hey guys, it's Theo. We've got a new episode of the Nerd Yags here. I'm here with uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Ryan Haggerty. Yo, 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 what's up? This is Ryan from Ryan's Comics, back again. <laughs> and saving the best for last, my good friend, Adrian Murphy. I wouldn't say I'm the best, but hello. Good evening. Hello, uh, Nerd Yags. Before we get started, uh, I want to let some of the new people know that are tuning in that we have a, a certain format. Uh, it's I'm called. Not sure I understand. And you know what, Ryan? I hate to interrupt, but Adrian's already Theo interrupted. Theo doesn't, or Adrian doesn't know how to do anything. Um, he, Siri wants to join. <laughs> Ryan, what were you saying, man? So, anyways, we have a certain format. Uh, we have the great, the good, and the bad. Uh, we go over certain things uh, in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have our three things that we like to talk about, and we go in a circle and talk about those things. Um, I'm currently on Facebook Live right now, so if you have any questions or anything you want us to chime in or talk about, uh, I can. I'm definitely reading that, so you definitely can do that. Uh, so, yeah, so let's start off with our great, good, and bad. Uh, go ahead, Theo. Uh, I'll start with my great. Uh, my great is Mario Kart 8. Um, it just came out a couple of weeks ago. When I first got it, I was playing nonstop. Unfortunately, I've been a bit uh, busy and haven't been able to put as much stuff as I wanted to lately. And that hurts me so much because this game is possibly the greatest Mario Kart I've ever played. Now, I played every single Mario Kart with the exception of Mario Kart 7, which is for the Nintendo 3DS, so I wasn't there when they introduced the hang gliding thing. So playing this now in Mario Kart 8 has changed the game. Um, it, is, it is phenomenal. I, the maps look incredible. Uh, Ryan and myself just picked up a Wii U, so we're now be able to play it in 1080s. Nice to see Nintendo, you know, stepping up to, to the plate now. I literally only bought my Wii U. For Mario Kart and Super Smash Brothers, both of us did actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like we 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 held out. You know, if you listen to the podcast, we've talked about just holding it out and getting it to the end. And Ryan, I think I speak for both of us when I say it was worth it. It's just gorgeous. There's some levels. Uh, there's this one level I just call it the Guitar Hero level. Uh, they put like a. It is just. Just flawless, uh, and it brings back the good old Mario Kart that we all have loved. You know. For years now, the only downside is the battle. I've heard the battle's not that good. If you're like me, I actually don't battle at all, anyway. So like that doesn't affect me in any way, shape, or form. But Mario Kart 8, the AI is great. Um, just the multiplayer stuff is great online. The action is great. If you're a Mario Kart fan, like it's just a must-have. It's a no-brainer. Obviously, every Mario Kart usually comes out as a no-brainer if you're a fan of it. But this game is a no-brainer. And I should say, I believe. If you get it, if you buy the game before July 31st, um, you actually get a code to download some other Mar some other Nintendo games. Uh, I think Pikmin is one of them. I downloaded Super Mario Brothers, uh, the one for Wii U, and there's some other games as well. So it's like a cool purchase. You can buy a bundle, and um, I mean, I got a bundle for like 300, something like that. So is there anything you like in this one better than the other ones? I liked how they took away. Uh, from Mario Kart Wii, um, they took away the A, B, and C. Like, in Mario Kart Wii, you could do really good in a race and get maybe an A. If you did decent, you get a B. If you did oh, you know, yeah, average, you right. get a C. Right. But then if you hit flawless, let's say you can get a star, two stars, or three stars. This one, they've done away with that. It's really just one star, two star, three star. And I kind of like that system because it's not so vague like the other Mario Kart. You know ones. what I don't like about it is that they don't have the time. I like to know my time when I finish the race. I noticed that. I yeah. noticed that. So, um, yeah, like they, they did take away like your best lap, uh, which has almost been like a staple of the DS ones. I'm not sure about the 3DS one, but at least for the DS one, uh, they have the time and then Mario Kart Wii. So that was a bit different, but are you you're a big Mario Kart fan, Adrian? Or? Well, considering we had this conversation before the podcast, I thought that Nintendo was out of business and then... <laughs> And then you, you and Ryan had kind of updated me of how long the longevity of Nintendo has been around. Over 100 years. Over 100 years. Uh, I am not a Mario Kart guy. I think I last time I was into it was the original Mario Brothers. Okay. Um, more of a PlayStation, Xbox right now, primarily Xbox. But it's good to hear you guys talk about it. But I'm glad Nintendo's still around. Uh, uh, it, this is on the Wii U, right? This is a Wii U, yeah. And yeah. this is all motion capture. Is it all motion, or is there a joystick? No. Or... Uh, so it, it has the the Wii U nun the Wii nunchucks, nunchucks. you had before, yeah. but they had the gamepad, um, which was like the new 
I think I actually called it a gimmick when it first came out. That was before I played with it. Um, but it's like a screen, like a tablet with controllers on the side hmm. uh, that you can actually play the Wii U. Like, you know, if the TV's being used, you can just play the Wii U games on this tablet. You know, I played it from... Where we go, iPad? Yeah, think of like an iPad and, you know, controllers on the side. So, like, it, you can play the Wii U games. I mean, if you're if you're in your room and someone else is watching TV, you can turn on the Wii U and just play it on this tablet. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, like, it's. I didn't think I'd use it at all until I found myself using it. So, so it's it's an innovative uh, aspect of the new gaming platforms of, uh, compared to PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah, I mean, as compared to, I mean, obviously not with, the, we'll see with the next next gen, with PlayStation yeah. has like their, the version of the Oculus Rift, you know, mm-hmm. or whatnot. But as far as these, you know, yeah, it's it's very different. I didn't think I would use it, and Nintendo made a mockery of me. They said, oh, you that's fool. Good. That's so, really yeah, that's my great. All right. What about you, man? Well, my great is more along the lines of, Everybody who watches cable television, and it's Game of Thrones season four, right? I believe so. This is season four. Season of heartbreak. Man. That's, um, all. That's well, it. The reason why I'm saying it's my great is because this is actually my first season I'm, I'm actually watching of Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I'm already enthralled in the story of it. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned in earlier podcasts that I was going to binge watch after this season. I was going to watch this complete season yeah. and then binge watch from season one. Um, I'm glad that I stuck with that, and I'm glad that I'm enjoying this season as much as I have. Now, I'm going to give a couple of spoilers. Spoilers, please. Uh, I'm going to go back to, uh, what was it, the mountain versus the the red viper? Oh, man. Uh, There was a... There was probably the most gruesome scene I've ever seen captured on cinematic film ever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff. That's a big statement. That's a big statement. So wait, can you explain the scene better? Because I don't, you know, all of us haven't seen it. So, well, all right. Well, there's uh, Tyrion Lannister has is being up for trial for the murder of uh, Joffrey, King Joffrey, and uh, the Red Viper. I'm not exactly sure of his name, mm-hmm. but they call him the Red Viper. Tyrion had he stepped up to be Tyrion's uh, emissary to fight in the Battle of the Death, instead of Tyrion having to do it, because he's a small person. Yeah. So uh, the Red Viper stepped in to be his champion to fight, and if he wins, he would win his freedom. And he's uh, fighting a guy called the Mountain. And he's fighting a guy called the Mountain. And who's actually... And who actually looks very, like a mountain. It's like six, seven, three something, or something like that. It's the second strongest man in the world, I believe, actually. <laughs> yeah. And, and what's interesting about it is the Red Viper really has ulterior motives because he really doesn't like uh, is, is it King's Landing yes yes he, he doesn't like them yeah. because uh, they've been at odds before mm-hmm. and the mountain had actually raped and killed the Red Viper sister yes so that was one of the uh, caveats for the Red Viper to step in for Tyrion mm-hmm. and fight for him in order for Tyrion to win his freedom so this scene this fighting scene it was pretty spectacular you know Red Viper was complaining or, or not just chastising the mountain for raping and killing his sister. Yeah. And he had almost really defeated him. Yeah, he, he could have finished he, him he, off. He could have finished him off, but... Oh, man. A trend in the Game of Thrones <laughs> that whatever you expect it, because the mountain eventually got his the upper hand, and... apart while admitting to, while admitting to, to raping and killing his sister yeah because the red Viper had literally almost killed him but he wanted the mountain to confess mm-hmm. and he got too close to the mountain and the mountain was able to trip him up and literally ripped his skull apart and and the good thing about it is that on game of thrones they don't hide the the graphic nature of it they literally show this man rip a human skull apart in the brain and I feel blood. like you just wanted to see that, Adrian. Man, that was so awesome. <laughs> Did you see it? No, I'm in mid season two right now. I'm oh. A little far behind. I I um I have a PlayStation Four with 18 games right now, and oh. I just bought a Wii U, and I have about another nine games for that that I just got, and um I have a lot of movies and stuff that I need to catch up on. I'm just overloaded on entertainment right now. That's a lot of hours that you have to catch up. No, I really like it. Really is though. So, yeah. and I just finished Orange is the New Black season two. And I have my shows that I watch already. So it's like, Game of Thrones is really good, 
I just don't. Ha- I literally don't have the time right yeah. now, and I want to, but I just have. I'm so backloaded. That's on how I feel about Orange is the New Black season one. Actually, what's that? I, that's how I feel about Orange is the New, Orange is the New Black season one. Mm-hmm. I started it, but I just. And that's how I feel about uh, Game of Cards. House of Cards. House of Cards. Yeah. I, I I started episode one. And <laughs> we all have these great shows. Yeah. But the thing about Game of Thrones is that it actually surpassed The Sopranos as the most watched hmm. cable television show in history. Where The Sopranos had had it, mm-hmm. now Game of Thrones has surpassed that. And if you really think about of all the television that's been produced, that's a lot of television. That's a lot of television. That's a lot of television. So that was my great, and I know if you guys have seen that episode, yeah, uh, it was pretty gruesome. And even the last one uh, was really good, where they were trying to take uh, the wall, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. protecting King's Landing. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of good fight scenes. Uh, you saw a lot of characters that you hadn't seen, like the giants. Oh, man. So riding mammoths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where did the mammoths Just come a- from? It's just a really, really well-written, mm. violent chill. And, and before we go to Ryan's uh, great, I just want to say, you know, props. Every time I watch Game of Thrones, I just want to say props to, like, all my friends, all the friends out there who's read the books mm-hmm. before this and haven't said anything. Mm-hmm. Because I'm sure you guys are probably just thinking, like, oh, you guys have no idea what's going to come next and, and all this stuff. But but so far, you know, it's been – the Internet is, is almost they're pretty quiet, much spoiler-free. Huh? Yeah, they're very quiet about it. So thank you guys. Like, I appreciate that. Is, I think everybody who's kind of getting the show appreciates is it. Is the show – I mean, if you have you, when you talk to your friends who've read the books, is the show really kind of going panel by panel of the books, or is there taking some liberties and um, changing the story? Well, you know, I think that uh, just from people I've talked to, I think that – that they add some stuff in some places, they flesh out some things that maybe weren't said before, uh, and and so on and so forth. But then the book's different in some places too. So I think it follows an overall arc. But you know, like I don't like talking to them too much about it in, in case their their tongue gets loose and, and they tell me something. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, what's your great man? Okay, so a little shameless plug here. Uh, my great is Novus, the featured card game. Mm-hmm. Um, I helped develop this game. I uh, work for the company called Zenion Games. Damien Levizo is the president of this Damien. company. Damien. Damien. Great, great guy. And he Hard worker. came to me with this concept of this game that he had pretty much already halfway finished mm-hmm. and just needed help mm-hmm. with fine-tuning the rules and, and the cards and some of the effects and stuff. And mm-hmm. so I got in there and I helped him, you know, give him that push to... To get the actual mechanics down, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, then they brought me on, and and I I feel like I'm a part of a good team, and we had a successful Kickstarter. Yes, uh, we had about 600 pre-orders, and it was it was a good it's a good thing starting, mm-hmm. and the game should be hitting my shelves here in the next two weeks. Uh, we're just waiting for it to come uh, from China. I know the shipping they just shipped it. I'm just saying two weeks, but it's probably gonna be sooner than that. Uh, but yeah, so. Nova's the feature card game. Basically, the, the, what the game is, it is um, uh, a combination of some of the games that we played in the past, like mm-hmm. trading card games, and we added it all into, we put it all into one game. We combined it in one game to make it easy for you. So if you already play card games, you can pick this game up, and it already feels like you already know how to play, uh, which is a good thing. And you know, we got around the technical parts of the rules and making sure it didn't copy anybody. Mm-hmm. And the game is really fun, though. And the cool thing is you don't have to buy any more packs or you don't have to buy booster packs or anything. The games, the the, the, the pack or the sorry, the decks are designed to battle against each other. And each deck has three commanders, and depending on which commander you have, uh, your deck plays differently. So there's a different game experience. So basically, if you're one one person can play with five decks with three different commanders, that's 15 different experiences they have with one game. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you. But for you know, for fifty bucks, and I'm let's say I'm going half half on it with my roommate, twenty five each. If I can get fifteen different experiences and one playthrough with all the different decks, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. You know what I mean? And that and that doesn't say that you didn't like your you didn't have a favorite one that you want to keep playing with over and over again. Yeah. So I think the replayability's there. There's a great storyline. There's great lore for it. You know. So um, definitely check out um, uh, Novus, uh, the featured card game. Yeah. I mean, they had a very successful Kickstarter. I mean, they went. I back it. They 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 and they went above and beyond what they were trying to raise and so that. So clearly, a lot of people agree. Um, I think I know I don't play trading card games too much, but but I remember hanging out with Damien and Ryan when they were talking about it, and I I'm excited to play it. Like it it looks awesome. 
awesome. It looks awesome. This is coming from Artwork a person is good. who doesn't even play those the, games. The, yeah. the, uh, we the have bot. professional artists, yeah. we have Magic mm-hmm. Gathering artists. Yeah, uh, the guy, John yeah, Avon. The guy who did John Avon. Yeah. John Avon yeah. is, uh, is on the... Is, is in there. Yeah. So we have we have some very good things that are backing us on mm-hmm. this. And uh, we're moving on to our next game, Shadows of Westminster. Yeah. Uh, and that's coming, or that Kickstarter was supposed to start tomorrow. Okay. Uh, actually, no, it is starting tomorrow. So Which is the 12th. Uh, which is uh, June 12th. The 13th. Sorry, June 13th. Tomorrow is the 13th. Okay. Uh, it's Friday the 13th tomorrow. Friday the 13th. That's crazy. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, Friday the 13th, we're going to start the Kickstarter. That might be bad luck, actually. I mean, <laughs> should talk about that. Um, so, yeah, so go check it out. Uh, make sure you donate if you can. Uh, it's another it's another fun game. I didn't help design this game. The game was already finished. Mm-hmm. Uh, the creator's name is Robert, and... Uh, you know the game is the game is fun. It's not Novus, but it's fun. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. And and I think backing it is gonna be awesome. I think it's gonna be a good game. It's gonna be another great uh, uh, addition to your, to your collection. Kickstarter's uh, already done. It just started. Okay. It started, it starts tomorrow. Okay. Uh, but the thing with Novus is the reason why I say it's not the same is because Novus is a whole world, and there's gonna be things adding on to it later. There's gonna be other games that are gonna be attached to it. So it's a whole different experience in Shadows. You know. So. Uh, yeah, definitely look out for our new game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool, because I was here when you guys first started it, and it was, yeah, it was good to see it come, come it to fruition. Mm-hmm. I think I have a card pattern after myself in there somewhere. Do you really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As, as one of the backers, as one of the... Oh, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Andrew, you, get your, you get your likeness. I in wish, the, I wish my likeness. Oh, oh. It was only $200. Oh, only part of the team. <laughs> guys, I... Uh, like a, like. A, I mentioned to you guys earlier, and if you listen to us a lot, you know, like Ryan said, we have a, uh, a format that we keep. But I'm going to change up a bit because I feel that my good is going to be something that all of us want to talk about. And before he goes into his good, I want everyone to realize that Theo was not going to tell us. We always talk about our goods and our bads before. and stuff. Theo refused to tell us. Actually, he gave us an option, but we said we we didn't want to know. Yeah. But he is so excited right now. You just see his face. I'm, I just I'm gonna He's ask kid you guys. Ahead so, of I'm time. so excited. To Are see you what guys okay right if we run out of time and aren't able to talk about your goods and bads? I well, just if, if, if it's that good and it and it entices that much conversation, then because yeah. my bad okay. is Harrison Ford broke his ankle, so that might not be that. <laughs> we might we can we can skip that if we yeah, have to. Yeah, if, if it takes up that much time, <laughs> all right, guys. Talk about your good, then well, 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 here's here's the thing. Here's here's my good. Um, it's just hit the internet. My friend, I have, I have a friend. Oh, this sounds so cliche. I have a friend in the industry, uh, but I do have a friend who who works in the industry, and he has a connect uh, to Warner Brothers and talking about what Warner Brothers maybe bringing to Comic Con. Now I'm letting you guys know this is a rumor. Uh, this it's it could be true. It could not be true. If this is true, then. We have not given DC credit. Uh, this is DC's rumored film lineup that they will announce at Comic Con. May 2016, we have Batman vs Superman. July, Shazam. Christmas, Sandman movie. May tw- May 2017, we have a Justice League movie. July, a Wonder Woman standalone film. Christmas, a Flash slash Green Lantern team up movie. And Black then, Green Lantern team and up? then May 2018, the Man of Steel sequel. Wow, that is pretty deep. So while while we're all like kind of kind of kind of thinking about that, Wait, so the first thing I'm thinking, is, go ahead, go ahead. Is Batman vs Superman is not a sequel. It's not a sequel. It's its own thing. Which which is crazy, but they've always they we've always called the Man of Steel sequel, but they've always said it's Batman vs Superman, Dawn of was it Dawn Just, of Justice? Yes. So why you guys say this? I, I made some notes that I wanted to hit. The first one is actually what Ryan just said. Batman vs Superman is not a sequel. That turns a lot of things on his head. Number two, Dream Lantern they say probably won't be Ryan Reynolds. I'm assuming they may go for John Stewart. Well, you, you know, know the mean? whole thing with Green Lantern is is like there's a whole army of lanterns, mm-hmm. so you can literally pick anybody. It can, it can literally be anyone. It can literally be anyone. I'm down for some Kyle Rayner personally. Uh, I personally do not want John Stewart. I, I want, want Kyle Rayner. I want Kyle Rayner. I want Kyle Rayner over John Stewart. I want Kyle yes. Rayner over John Stewart. Yes. He's a better Green Lantern. I believe so. Yes. Oh, my, my thing is John Stewart is not creative. He's boring. And he always gets he always gets beat up. <laughs> really? Yes. He is like he comes up with like the most basic. Things ever. If you're trying to knock somebody out, he'll make like a big bouncy ball or something. Like, good job, John. Kyle. Right. Kyle will make teddy bears just fall on your head. Like he's <laughs> he's an artist. He's creative. Um, 
Other thing, a Wonder Woman standalone film. I mean, we know that she's going to be introduced in Batman vs. Superman, so if they're going to have a Wonder Woman standalone film a year later, um, let's see, what else? Shazam? Yeah, that's pretty What? Cool. That's coming out of nowhere, but we have heard The Rock. Remember, we've been hearing The Rock yeah, just in talking Shazam, about some you stuff know like Black that. Adam's there was a Black Adam. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, wow. how many people are going to be typing, I liked it when his name was Captain Marvel. <laughs> I'm just waiting. I'm they'll they'll come out. I'm they'll come out. Um, Batman, Batman vs. Superman will have cameos by Cyborg, mm-hmm. and which we already kind of knew, but they said the Flash may have a cameo in it. Are we talking about the the... The, uh, the CW Flash, that's mm-hmm. that's in there. You know, we don't know how that's going to go in there yet. We don't know if it's that Flash. Um, the Green Lantern may be introduced. Aquaman will be seen in the Justice League movie. And how we've heard about Batman vs. Superman project being delayed. Delays weren't due to script or anything like that. Delays were actually due to working out, like, the cameos and how much will people, you know, what people will be in the cameos. Wow. So it's a lot of information. Adrian, what are your what are your thoughts? How many, on how many films is that? That's seven <laughs> That's films up to 2018. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty big lineup. Now, the good thing is, uh-huh. is that we're all going to be in Hall H to see this. Yes. Yes, we will. Comic Con this year. Yes, we will. And we'll all have it on tape. Google Glass. <laughs> it, I mean, so it is interesting that the Batman. The Superman is not a secret. That's Superman blowing steel. my mind. I mean, that's it makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, Wonder Woman sequel. I I hope sequel that or, or or the the Wonder Woman standalone. Mm-hmm. I hope that old girl can 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 handle a film to herself when her really only her film credits is. Uh, uh, well, she'll, have, she'll have some more film credits by then, though. Well, I mean, Hopefully. but look at if this, I mean, if this is the right Batman timeline. Already, well, so. this right timeline, then this comes out in July. May is the Justice League movie, so we're talking about a Justice League movie with all of them, and then a month after that, a standalone Wonder Woman movie. Hmm. So, what could this Justice League movie be about? Well, the Justice League movie is going. Well, the Batman versus Superman uh-huh. is supposed to lead directly into Justice League, yes. from what I understand. But they're saying that Shazam is going to come out before Justice League? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what they're saying. Shazam comes out July of 2016. <laughs> and then Christmas is Sandman. Yeah. Now, who is Sandman? I'm not familiar with him. Who I'm Ryan, I'm not too familiar with Sandman either. I know they've actually been talking about this for a while, but I don't know how it plays. Is he even into... a DC guy, or is he a vertical guy? Uh, it's a vertical guy. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's exactly how he, like, the whole thing, like, it's all based in, like, the dream world. Mm-hmm. So it's exactly how it sounds, you know. He's this dude that's just going hard in the dream world. Like I've only read. He's Neil Gaiman, right? Neil Gaiman wrote it. Yeah, yeah. Neil Gaiman wrote it. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how I can put it like in easier terms. Like, <sighs> Sandman, exactly how it is when we grew up. He rules the the dream world, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And so basically, you're He's just Freddy Krueger. You're going through his adventures in okay. the dream world. Yeah. Like, uh, I, it's hard. It's hard to explain without reading it. Uh-huh. You know. Uh-huh. Um, and that's bad because I'm a comic shop owner and I should be able to be able to do that. <laughs> We're not judging you this time. But it's still it still is DC. Like yeah. Vertical is just an imprint for other books that aren't mm-hmm. Superman and Batman, you mm-hmm. know. So uh, it's gonna be a good story. That's where um, Death made uh, its first appearance was in Sandman. Okay. I think it was like Sandman number eight or something like that. Okay. Uh, so that was kind of a notable thing. Uh, but yeah, so Sandman's the man. Like there's going to be a lot of people that go to see that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure mm-hmm. it's going to do well. Uh, but Justin, mm-hmm. Go- Justin Gordelev is linked to he's, that. Yeah, right? yeah, he's been yeah. linked to that for a while. I believe we actually talked about it before. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, I want to I wanna go back to the Batman versus let's Superman. Go, let's go back to it. Let's go well, back to it. I just noticed something in, in my video game playing. I just started, uh, I, I'm replaying Batman Arkham City, uh-huh. right? And so when I started it, I went on to the PlayStation Network and I bought all the add-ons and skins and everything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And what I noticed is that there is a uh, Dark Knight Return skin, right? Uh-huh. That basically the skin that you see on the PlayStation is the exact same outfit that Ben Affleck is wearing. When you when you see it on the mm-hmm. PlayStation mm-hmm. and then you look at Ben Affleck's picture, mm-hmm. it's the exact same outfit. From the skin mm-hmm. to the pockets to everything, it looks like Ben Affleck on the PlayStation skin. It's crazy. I, I just noticed that. That's interesting. It is interesting. Maybe they may have known something. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. 
So, so Ryan, when you look at these films, it, let's just say hypothetically all these are true, which one intrigues you the most? It's a good question. Hmm. <laughs> Probably the Flash and Green Lantern team up. Because I hear team up, and I get really excited. Uh -huh. Because now we're going to get a movie that I haven't seen before. Yeah. We're going to get two heroes that are going to be fighting together and quipping off each other. And, you know, Green Lantern and, and Flash already have that weird dynamic, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so to see them on screen together is going to be awesome. I want to see them use their powers together. Mm -hmm. I want to see the special effects, the CGI. I, I think that one's probably going to be one of the better ones. I wonder if they, you know, I, I just want to see Flash get the lantern ring for like two seconds, you know. <laughs> like, what? Uh -huh. A green lantern Flash? What uh -huh. is going on right now? Uh -huh. Unstoppable. I don't think you can stop that, right? Like, I mean, he he runs faster than anybody and he'll just take you out. Like, he'll just sword chop you when he's running by you. Like, there's nothing you can do. So I'm pretty I'm pretty excited for that Flash green lantern, um, especially Christmas. Like, we haven't got a Christmas superhero movie yet, have we? Well, I mean... That's Thor was out in November, technically. I want a Christmas movie. Yeah, there yeah. hasn't been. There That's a Thanksgiving movie. That's a Black Friday movie. Well, here, here's <laughs> something I, I'm interested about that this Flash Green Lantern movie, because they say that Ryan Reynolds isn't going to come back. Well, I'm in, hypothetically, he's not coming back, right? But this is a Flash team-up movie with Green Lantern. So are they going to either, A, reestablish Green Lantern completely in this Justice League film, or are you going to keep it canon from the previous Green Lantern movie? I don't know. That, that, because be that's, a, that's a lot to do in a Justice League movie if you're going to like reestablish Oa and stuff like that versus just saying, oh, uh, Hal is out doing something else. Here's well, John Stewart. They haven't even established... I mean, they've hinted at the canon for Batman, but we don't know if it's going to be derivative from the Dark Knight True, trilogy but, or... But I, I think I personally feel that Batman doesn't need any more origins. No, no, no. As, as at least compared to at least compared to Green Lantern, who yeah. doesn't have that doesn't have that kind of feel with the main public. You know all these great um, like versions. Films, right? You know, uh, um, but me personally, I think the Shazam project uh -huh. is interesting. for power and Shazam is one of them and so in his counterpart Black Adam uh -huh. they're really really good adversaries and powerhouses in the yeah. DC universe yeah uh, the reason why Shazam is a good uh, adversary to Superman is because Superman has two weaknesses is most people know about kryptonite but a lot of people don't know that Superman is just as vulnerable if it's not more vulnerable to magic, to magic. yeah and electricity uh, electricity is hit or miss, but it's hey, not like magic. Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> he, it, it's hit or miss. Yeah, but, but it's not, it's not like... Oh, 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 and Lois Lane. Ah, uh, see what I did there? <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Well, we actually have uh, someone commenting right now and saying, uh, you know, wondering where Justly Dark is in that lineup. And that's, and that's a great question because... Yeah. That is a great have, question. They have Constantine coming out. Uh, the TV show. Yeah. They didn't even mention a hell, anything Hellblazer yet. That trailer you know? for Constantine is pretty good. Too. It's really well, good. Well, the new one has, uh, uh, has a uh, 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 Naboo. Um, Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate. Uh, I'm not uh, excited yes. about but it's okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. not excited about Dr. Fate because, uh -huh. honestly, I'm just not. Like, <laughs> really, though, name one storyline where you're like, Dr. Fate killed it. Like, no. Justice League Unlimited. Well, I think it was good because <laughs> it expanded the universe on the television yeah, show. Yeah, but, episode 26 of Justice League Unlimited. Like. But, but, that, but that actually is a very good question, though, because we hear occasionally, you know, it's um, it's it's always like, hey, guys, don't forget. It's almost like Dr. Dre and, yeah. and, the, and this new album. Every so often, it'll just drop, and we'll talk about it again. Uh -huh. You know, we've just heard uh, Del Toro talk about this new dark. script. Yeah. You're right. Like, it's not on here at all. And if this is up to 18, maybe maybe they're saying, maybe they're saying, hey, let's hold off until Constantine. Which you confirmed Constantine with your guy that works at the studio. We talked about that. Right? No, no, this no. is rumor. <laughs> this is just a rumor. Oh, I thought of, you confirmed. No, no, no. I'm lying to people on here. What, what are you I telling the people? Could, I thought you confirmed. No. I thought that's what you told oh, me. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't do that. There's no. always some truth in rumor, though, because I, I, I predict that this Comic Con will be a. It'll be the most competitive Comic-Con between Marvel and DC. 
I, I, I think it will be. Because this is the first Comic Con where DC is really, really going to have more than one uh -huh. project to announce. Yeah. Where, where in previous Comic Cons, Marvel has said, hey, this is what's going to be coming. Yeah. They'll have three or four trailers of every movie where DC would come in. And, and, and it was never really DC, it was always just Warner Brothers. Yeah. Where Marvel has always been Marvel yeah. at Comic Con, but when. Any DC movie uh -huh. comes up, it falls under the Warner Brothers umbrella. So maybe they'll give DC their own... So so let me ask you this, yeah. then. Let me ask you this. Okay. We know the movies that Marvel has coming up. I mean, Marvel's prided itself with saying, hey, we've got these movies, we've got the Cat movie, you know, all this stuff. If DC comes out and drops this... Mm -hmm. I'm still is it, is it no? I'm not. I'm not told. Just as a fail. I'm simply like, like as far as <laughs> as far Marvel as the, as far as let's say you know if if we're ending Comic Con, if this is the last day of Comic Con, and we've just seen you know Marvel's like, hey guys, so we've got a sneak peek of the Avengers two or something like that, and DC comes along is like, hey, we've got Shazam, <laughs> like you know in two years and and all this other stuff, who wins? Avengers. Think I'm, so, not, I'm not right now in 2014. Uh -huh. I am not about excited about 2016. Uh -huh. I'm excited for this coming up summer. Okay, mm -hmm. two years from now. Okay, maybe Christmas of 2016. Definitely not excited. Anything in 2017? Why would you even talk to me about it? And 18? Are you a joke? Why would you wait five years after a movie comes out to drop a sequel mm -hmm. to the original movie? I'm already really? bored. I'm already tired of it. Let's move on. And I'm only saying that. Man or Superman better be in Batman Superman. Well, obviously in Batman Superman, but he also better be in Justice League, which he'll be, be in. Yeah. yeah, and he better be in Wonder Woman because if he's not, then I'm bored. I'm tired of him. It's over for me. Well, here here's the interesting thing, and that's why I'm looking at this Man no of Batman Steel. films either, though. That's what I'm thinking about. Ooh. No Batman films. Well, it, man, and, that's and, actually and ben that's Affleck, really. And Ben Affleck was promised three picture deal, but I don't know if that Batman picture... Superman Justice League Man of Steel two. Yeah, maybe. Or I mean, for, but all for all we know, I'm just saying he's gonna be he's gonna be in Batman Superman, obviously. Yeah. He's gonna be in Justice, Justice League. Yeah. And that's he only needs to be in one more, and he doesn't even have to have a big role to get to be in it. That's true. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, so right, right. I want to kind of talk about what you just said though, because the thing is, is that Superman's gonna be in these films. It's just not gonna be a Man of Steel I want sequel. A Superman movie, not five years apart. Really? Yes. Even though, even if you're seeing the character, because because, and I and I'm just going off of the people that come in the shop that uh -huh. really like the movie. People uh -huh. love Man of Steel, and you're telling me that we're not going to get Man of Steel again because Zack Snyder's not going to be directing all these other movies, is he? I mean, I don't well, know. Doing, I don't, I don't, he is doing Justice League, which makes sense. That's and fine. he's and he's doing Batman vs Superman, right? Mm -hmm. So but yeah, I don't. Yeah, I just don't think I think Superman needs another standalone somewhere in there. Okay, I okay. think a 2016 standalone would be awesome, mm -hmm. or just something like. Just give me something. You just like Superman, though, which well, isn't a bad thing. But, saying, but yeah, I'm just saying three years, and then we, we're gonna get like a this like legal battle thing. Like mm -hmm. I'm not convinced. I want Superman the whole time fighting in space, beating mm -hmm. people up with Supergirl. <laughs> like I want to fight. I want to see him fighting Martian Manhunter or something. Like I want something like that. I don't want. I want to see him fight Doomsday. Five years separation between the first movie and the second movie. Like what? What movie have they ever in the history of movies? Said we're gonna make the first one, and five years after we're planning to make the second. Well, they, one. there's a couple of sequels that's that's come out. Well, I know, but I'm like, saying as far as planning it to come out yeah. five years later, it's not. It's always like, oh well, it had good success, like Dumb and Dumber. When, when did Cap come out? The first Captain America. Two years ago. Is it just two years ago? Yeah, they're on point. They're every two really? years. Yeah. You're on. They're on like that. Yeah, and you're double. You're you're doubling okay. Marvel's timeline. And I was already like, man, I need I need some more Cap. Mm -hmm. Even even after Avengers movie, <laughs> I needed more Cap uh -huh. because. He was just a character in a big scheme. Like, uh -huh. Cap probably got, what, maybe 20 minutes of screen time in the whole movie? Mm -hmm. That's it? Nothing like, significant. Really. Nothing significant. And he only had a few line, like one-liners that were cool. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, he was getting clowned in the movie anyways. Like, it didn't even seem like that was really Cap. Mm -hmm. I just want to see Man of Steel. I want to see Superman be Superman before, like, he was not Superman yet in Man of Steel. Mm -hmm. Batman vs Superman. Obviously, we don't know what's gonna happen, mm -hmm. but I don't think he's gonna be Superman. I don't think he's gonna be doing like ripping ships apart and doing crazy stuff. I feel like he'll truly come into his own in the Justice League movie. Like mm -hmm. I imagine that's when that's when Superman will fully just because we don't know the villain of we don't know the villain. Of, it is confirmed. I don't want they make the Superman to be turn out to be some guy that's always trying to. I need everyone's approval and. 
I want everyone to like me. I don't want it to be that Superman. I Henry Cavill be... doesn't. Henry Cavill Superman doesn't seem like that guy but, though. But I'm just saying, even in this one, even this last one, he was doing everything for everybody else. And like, okay, I know that Superman, but like, it was so it was whiny. You were tired of seeing that. Superman? I was tired of seeing that. I want to see the Superman like in New Fifty Two, where he's like, "Did you not know that I'm Superman? Mm-hmm. I'm he. He just gave away his Clark Kent thing, like." Why am I even trying to be Clark Kent? Like, thank you. It doesn't make any sense. You're a god, basically. I, Why would you want to write in a newspaper and date a human? I predict it's going to be a fu- it's going to be a, a, a future timeline, mm-hmm. not not too, too distant future mm-hmm. after the first Man of Steel, where Batman and Superman takes place. Because obviously, I don't know if you guys have seen it. There's a statue of Superman yes, that's already yes, been erected. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really, yeah. yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. They, they they've erected a, uh, where where they started the sure, filming. Sure. Sure. Um, it was told that, of course, Dawn of Justice, that the end of Batman Superman is a direct mm-hmm. link in to mm-hmm. Justice League. Well, so we already know side at, at, in there. At, at the very end of uh, Superman, Batman versus Superman, it's the climax of it is going to lead right into Justice League. Mm-hmm. Um, there was no, but for them, I, I really do question whether it's Shazam and Sandman. Maybe Sandman can come out before Justice League. Visually, Sandman is going to be amazing. I'm just, thinking, I'm just, my mind's blown for that. I like, wouldn't really want to consider Sandman a DC property, though. It is though. You have to. Say I feel, it is. I, I feel you like know, it's and, not. Hold on, hold on. Let me get on that because geez. when he, when Sandman started, he was crossing over into Swamp Thing, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, and Alan Moore's version of Hell. So, and Alan Moore was a big part of DC at that at that point. So, if Sandman's crossing over to that, you cannot say that okay. he's not. Part but what of, if Sa- saying, what if Sam? No, I'm not saying anything with DC, but yeah. I, I feel like what Adrian's kind of saying is. Like at least when you look at the, these are all Justice League characters and yeah, yeah. Sandman. Mm-hmm. But what if Sandman's crossed over to Constantine? Oh, he could easily. That, 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 that would make sense. I mean, he met he met John Constantine in Hellblazer. Exactly. So so you could have you could have Hellblazer nineteen by the way. You can have crossover Don't from the CW that. shows <laughs> until the movies, and then jumping over to Constantine on another station. That's I'm, crazy. I'm not I'm not gonna be too critical about Man of Steel coming out so later. Is Especially if you're gonna, I don't. You know, it. you know, you're gonna get a lot of Superman yeah. and Batman. Versus I just get Superman. passionate about certain things, and I get passionate about my sequels. That's all. Yeah, I. <laughs> I just hope that <laughs> it's a sequels, doomsday. If it's a death of Superman, do we, do we know who the villain of a uh, Justice League's gonna be? It's probably gonna be. We'll probably find that Dark out. Side and Batman v Superman. We'll probably find that out. And Lex Luthor will probably not be the main villain, but a supporting character, mm-hmm. but a, a significant role in it. I, 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 that's that's just my theory on it because there's a now now the only thing that you gives said, me you work, said who's gonna be the Lex Luthor. I, no, the, I think, think gonna, I think it'll be Darkseid. I think it's gonna be Doomsday, personally. For for Justice League. For Justice League, I think it'll be Doomsday. Think because Darkseid is too much to. I think Darkseid is just too big. Uh-huh. I think that's because you got to bring in you got to introduce a new planet. You got to introduce an army. You got to introduce a lot of things. And DC and Marvel's coming out with um, Apocalypse. And Darkseid's from the Planet of Apocalypse. I think that's gonna start messing people up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, sorry, X Men. Sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah X Men. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying, like, as far as no. promoting characters I'm give and a like, theory. no, it's fine. I'm just saying, as far as promoting and saying, just like the Quicksilver thing. Oh, there's two Quicksilvers. People are confused. Yeah. Wait, isn't Apocalypse you... the guy from X Men? No, no, no. It's the Planet Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the only reason I would think it would be Doomsday because Doomsday has those abilities where. How do you either beat this guy, mm-hmm. you know? And that'll be an epic battle, mm-hmm. and you know, I don't know. So let me run this by you. Yeah, Lex Luthor gets a hold of Zod's body from from the Man end of Superman. Steel. Okay, from how do Man we of Steel. okay from the negative or from the uh, no he broke, he broke his neck. Zod was oh Zod oh yeah, sorry Zod. my bad yeah. Zod sorry and somehow experiments and creates Doomsday because Zod's body is or still Bizarro. There. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because, but because now that you say Doomsday, I, I mean uh, Dark Side, Dark Dark Side would be a hard guy unless unless he just comes in at the end where he's just like you know how they did at the Avengers where they introduce right 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 Thanos right, right. if they do something like that then yeah kind of like oh he's been playing everybody but you know? I really do not want Batman and Superman to be the only two adversaries in that movie because mm-hmm. it's not a fair fight mm-hmm. but I mean we're well, not gonna fight it's a legal battle Donna Justice with a V it's only <laughs> it's it's see, like there has to be there has to be something where, there's no way they're gonna fight like if they and if anyone ever thinks Superman or Batman can be Superman I'm gonna tell you one thing Kryptonite his little little bit of Kryptonite he has Superman not only 
is Superman, but he can move at the speed of yeah, light, yeah. basically. So he's as soon as he point. sees that, he's in the air. Yeah. And guess what happens when he's in the air? He uses supervision to pinpoint where Batman's brain is. And guess what he does after that? He uses his laser beams to explode this, his head. So I'm just saying, there is no Henry, way Henry Batman Cavill wins. Superman. He'll he'll cut a dude real quick. <laughs> the, the only the <laughs> only way the quick. only way that Batman can legitimately beat Superman is to betray his trust. Okay, well I don't want to go into Batman versus Superman because we can talk about that all day. Well, well here here's something I want to suggest. Right. What if this Shazam movie takes place at the same time as Batman versus Superman? Hmm? Wait, what do you mean? Like like they just they just happen at the same time. Like what if what if Shazam's doing his thing over here, you know, like with mm-hmm. like because because it's obviously kind of the next movie that's evil. a tight move, that's a tight window. Be- because if they come out if, if if they come out if Shazam comes out a month after Batman vs Superman, I feel like that may be almost too much Superman on on, on the op- almost the opposite of what you're saying. Uh, uh, the way in the five year thing, it's like well we just saw Superman movie now we're bringing another Superman character. But imagine, like, we're seeing Billy Baxton, uh, you know, and, like, this magic stuff going on, maybe being affected by what's happened in in, uh, in Metropolis and, and whatnot, but, like, going through his own thing with the Black Adam and all this stuff. Like, maybe we don't see Superman in this that's, one at that's all. That's kind of what happened in Forever Evil, where in Forever Evil, when they were leading up to the, in the comic book, yeah. they were leading up to it, they were also... In the same time frame, they were leading up to doing different the, things. They were telling the story mm-hmm. of Shazam, mm-hmm. and that's how Shazam got mm-hmm. introduced into Forever Evil and everything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't. And you know, like I, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, man. But that would make sense because what happens, like, what happens if the very ending of Batman vs Superman, right? The very end of Batman vs Superman leads to, leads to the Justice League. <laughs> what if that takes place? Five minutes before the ending of Shazam. If you guys, are you guys, you guys kind of feeling me a bit? Like, what happens if all of them show up at the end of the Shazam movie? And then, because Shazam, if you exclude Sandman, Shazam is the last movie that happens before this Justice League movie. Yeah. And they're not going to have a Justice League movie without Shazam if you're already going to have a movie with Shazam. No, is Shazam a Superman character? No, he's not. Yeah, I. I don't, Shazam is his own character. Yeah, he's yeah. his own guy. Yeah, Shazam, Shazam is his, but he's his not, own guy. He, yeah, he's his, Superman level though. I mean, well, yeah, but his origin, his origin isn't like in a Flash or Green Lantern. It's are his you, own thing. Are right? you trying yeah. to say that yeah. basically yeah. it's almost Superman like to have a Superman like character come right after a Superman movie? Yeah, I would say that yes, another but, powerhouse. But with Kate. but they're totally different though. I mean, why Henry Cavill's character is going to be dealing with all these ramifications like that? They can play on the on the um because Billy Batson is um little kid is he's, a is an orphan. He's yeah, a doc, you know so. They can play on that story hard. He's looking up at the statue or oh something like goodness. that. You know what I mean? It's like, a wrap. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a world that's molded by the Man of Steel, but it's his own adventure in it. For all we know, the Man of Steel, maybe he's looking at the building and says, like, I'll never be like that or something like that, or I'll, I'll always protect him. What if Billy Baxter's parents are killed in the debris from a... Uh, the Zod Man of Steel fallout. You're, you're way out there. Man, you're listen. Look, there. look, guys. Can <laughs> we die? You might as well direct the movie. Are we, are we doing what is? I, I, thought, I thought you guys were all with me. I thought we were all seeing we got We got another comment saying, what if Sandman was in Wonder Woman because he's also known as Morpheus? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Is he really? Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, he is. He's known as Morpheus. So what does Morpheus have to do with Wonder Woman? It's just the whole Greek whatever. Just oh, a Greek, just oh. a Greek mythology thing. Yeah, I'm just oh. saying. Oh man, interesting. So yeah. wait, so how does how do the Greek gods really interact with Superman? I really haven't read too much about that, but like, how do how do those all interact like with with? Well, they're dealing with it in the Batman. I mean, the Superman Wonder Woman thing, uh-huh. where uh, oh, they're just strong beings. They don't much. really care for Superman that much okay. because he's so powerful. Okay. Okay. Uh, they haven't expended on it too much, uh-huh. but because Wonder Woman is affiliated with him, and then she's a god now. Yeah. She, she's actually the god of war now. Okay. Oh. Uh, so it's interesting. So maybe, maybe like Superman, like I don't know, maybe he's in the Marvel thing and just can't handle it. I know we're know, all like, excited about this DC, but I'm still Marvel. No, I mean like I want to put that. I out think there. the funny thing is, is that the great thing about Marvel is that we can get excited about like we know what's coming up. But this is, I mean, I did not expect this at all. Like my mind's still kind of blown that. Batman vs Superman is not the sequel to Man of Steel, you know. And then when they start throwing out Shazam and stuff like that, I mean, Sandman possibly uh, t- coming over into this Wonder Woman. 
Ryan's just touched the tip of the iceberg with a Flash slash Green Lantern movie. It's ridiculous. That's crazy. I don't even That's know. crazy. Dude, they can do some crazy stuff. They start bringing in lanterns because what? Didn't Flash have the Blue Lantern? The honestly, Blue Lantern. Honestly, honestly, see, what Flash I would... has always been more Green Arrow's partner than Flash's. But I mean, they have teamed up a lot, but there's never been like a book specifically mm-hmm. geared towards Green Lantern. What I would be more Flash. excited about, honestly, is a Green Lantern Core movie. Like Green Lantern Core. Listen, that's now, done. No, who's out of there? No, no. Peter would have. That would have. <laughs> we. Been, if I did it, get some red lanterns in there. Get some blue lanterns in there. Let's go. That's all I'm saying. If they come out, if they start. No Green Lantern Core movie, but a Flash Green Lantern team up. Now I'm not excited anymore. I want to be on a movie. <laughs> I want the spectrum Ryan, to be introduced. Ryan shut down his own excitement right now. <laughs> Is it now with all these superhero movies coming out uh, of established heroes? Uh-huh. Do you think it would be hard for anybody to establish another mainstream hero just from who? jump? Anybody? Who though? Like, Us. Which hero? Anybody. No, it's impossible. It's impossible, it's right? I don't think you so. Could do, you could do stuff like Lucy, like the new movie Lucy that's yeah. coming out where you can create someone with powers. Mm-hmm. But to create a whole... And, and I'll, just let me go through it real quick. Yeah. To create a whole universe, it's taken DC 75 years to even be able to get to the point to get the following to watch these movies. Now, to say successful, yeah, maybe if you spent $100 million on a movie and you made $200 million, mm-hmm. okay, that's successful, obviously. But to be on the same level, to be getting towards the billion-dollar mark, I don't think anyone has a chance because why would I want to go see Jumps Joe Blow superhero when I have the full collection on Blu-ray of the new, of the Batman mm-hmm. series? You know, it's because it's a character I connect with, it's a character I grew up with. I have no emotional connection to anything that anyone is going to do right now. You know, and they try to do it already. They try to do the Will Smith thing. Will Smith trying to be a superhero. That was a. I mean, people didn't like it, but that was a decent movie it as far as a superhero movie, movie yeah, goes. Yeah. You know. That was, you know, they tried to create I think somebody. what's the last original one? That's the original Super movie I'm thinking about. That's Chronicle, the, actually. Yeah, Chronicle. Was, which Chronicle was a was, sleeper. But Chronicle was a great movie, but honestly... It I, can't compare it with... It just... The, you know, Michael B. Jordan, sorry, bro, you are not Henry Cavill as Superman. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And there's just not enough star power. I don't think any star is going to go to a movie and say, <laughs> oh, I want to be I want to be in this movie because superhero movies is the thing. I want to be a no-name superhero versus... Mm, I can so it's impossible for no- anybody strange, to... You know? Not 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 in comics because comics you can create a sure. superhero all the time. But just say you're wanting to create an original film. But like if they did like an Afro Sam, like an Afro was it Afro Afro Samurai? Uh, Afro Samurai or Samurai Jack or something of that nature where they take a, like an animated to like mm-hmm. an animated hero to live screen. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean obviously they're going to be all animated. Sure. But you know what I mean? Sure. Like a like a comic book or some type of cult following. I think you can find success on that level. Because I think, you know, I would go see an Afro Samurai movie. I don't know about you guys, but I would. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think just to uh, break up the monotony of so many superhero films uh-huh. that one of these major studios is going to have to do something different. Like Marvel is or DC, they're going to have to do a complete animated, in continuity film to go with their cinematic universe. Think so? Why not? Because those lose money, and and this is coming from someone who loves the animated movies. But like those animated, movies, that's straight fan service, and they know it. But if it's in the same continuity, say if it's a direct continuity film, because animated movies can make money. I mean, I see them all the time on yeah, Disney for sure. But they Anima- don't. They don't make. They're not, they're not the going to make. Though. They're not going to make. They're not going to make that kind of money though. Are Billion. you sure? So if Pixar was to do well, Pixar's going a- with Big Hero Six. Well, that's 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 a Marvel and DC uh, Disney collaboration. Mm-hmm. But if Pixar was to yeah, do Disney can Disney's all the game an now. Avengers film, and it was a direct continuity, that would be a big money movie. If it was a Pixar movie with Marvel characters mm-hmm. in direct continuity, it would be a game changer, and it would be something different. Yeah, and I think it would make a lot of money. I think it would make money, but it am wouldn't. I, make... Am I right, DC? <laughs> or, or Disney. <laughs> I think it'll make money, but it wouldn't make that kind of money. Like that's the thing. I think it'll make money, but you're literally leaving hundreds of millions of dollars I don't, on the table. I don't think that none of these superhero movies are gonna make as much money as previous because of the redundancy. Honestly, I think they're gonna just keep making more money. You, you, I think no one's think going so. under five hundred million forever now. Like it's all gonna be over five hundred million. It's gonna be all. We're going to double, triple up no matter what we do now. It's just too big now. Everyone's going to have to see it. They are guaranteed to get 
ten dollars, ten to fifteen dollars from you on every single one of these already. You know, so it's just it's just too implanted into our culture. I think at this point. I, I want to say something else real quick to what Adrian just said. Another reason why I don't think so is because I don't think rated PG thirteen animated movies do as well. Because anime movies, you're gonna you're gonna associate with kids. All these movies are rated PG thirteen. And there, there's not there's nothing you can say about it, you know. Mm-hmm. So like, if if Flash Green Lantern is a PG thirteen animated movie, I feel like you're cannibalizing. Your you know, what'd be dope so, though. You know, what'd be dope if Samuel was rated R. That would be dope. So I um, would be even more excited. The latest Disney <laughs> movie. Happen. What was the last Disney movie? Uh, well, Fro- not Frozen. 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 That wasn't PG-13? Oh, no, actually, it was, was um, it was a uh, million R. Million R. I think you saw animated. You saw animated. Oh, animated? Animated. 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 Yeah. Well, that I one broke it... all the records, so that's not fair. Yeah. Like, Was it PG-13 or I was it G? it was G. I think it was G. I think it was G. There would be no... Yeah, those movies, I mean... What about Maleficent? Was that G? PG. Or PG. PG? Yeah. PG? Yeah. 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 I'm surprised yeah. they got PG with all that, too. Yeah. What, what was happening in there? Fantasy violence. People were getting murked off. So there is a difference between PG and PG-13? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't. Oh yeah, PG thirteen is usually a rated R without the. Blood. You can kill people. Like you can like kill you can, people with no blood. Yeah, you can light someone up with a machine gun. There just can't be blood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's like yeah. you can only use a couple curse words. Like there's PG thirteen is Captain America Winter Soldier. That was PG. I mean, X Men. Yeah. Use, uh, they, I mean, they, they, you can use the F word like once. In yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes they'll just like throw it in like at you, the end. You can like, use the F word without a sexual connotation. Okay. I believe in a PG thirteen movie. Yeah. Right? There you go. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. And these are exciting times. I mean, we uh, and this is off subject. And, and I was uh, I was in the shop yesterday, and I was talking with uh, Damien and Damien, uh, Sean. Sean. And I was saying like, you know, before I met you guys, I was said I was alone in this world as far as like being a nerd and being comics because all my friends they weren't, you know, uh-huh. you're twenty. Well, if people don't know, Adrian is twenty years retired Navy, yeah. and. Obviously, there's not going to be a lot of super nerdy guys in the Navy. I know there is, obviously. Yeah, I mean there is, but not in my age. Exactly, exactly. exactly. And so I was, I was telling him how (laughs) what a relief it is, an American hero, and and, and to be around people who uh, share my same interest, my real interest, not just things that we I have in common with just any other Joe Blow, like drinking and going to a bar, going to a club and picking up girls. But my real interest. I don't want doing that or Theo. Huh. You don't. You don't what? We like to go to the library and read. <laughs> we don't. We don't partake in reading our comic books. On top of this, like Levar Burton came out with the Reading Rainbow, and I flipped. That was my day. <laughs> I flipped. Like no, literally, I didn't even know I could jump that high, uh-huh. and my knees were just like just lifted above my head, and just it was amazing. Like a butterfly in the sky, perhaps. Maybe in mud, oh, but well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, so can I get to my good before we you finish? Know, go, go, ahead. Have, go, oh, go ahead. Oh, thanks for the permission. Go ahead. Thanks. Please, uh, Theo's uh, took up all their time. Now. I just want to I just want to comment on E3 real quick. E3 right. is amazing. Charlotte uh, Parker, who works here, she was at E3. Charlotte! Re- representing Ogiku, her website. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, check out ogiku.com. That's her she was Charles our website. Guest. Huh? She's our first guest. She's, first uh, she's our first guest on our first podcast, which you can also find on YouTube. Uh, but Charlotte's there, and she's having, she's having a great time. But from what I got from it so far, I'm really excited for the future of the next-gen consoles because I didn't understand the how big they can make these new worlds in these games. Uh, I didn't think that was something that would be pushing. I always thought it was going to be better graphics. But honestly, I will sacrifice graphics for um, the size of a game. Um, an example is there's a new game coming out. Um, what did I? What was it called again? Do you remember? Uh, over the sky, something oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, something, uh, something, something sky, sky, something. It's really good though. If you go on E3 site, you can see everything that's happening. Yeah. Uh, but basically, it's like you know, you're. It looks like Skyrim, but on a whole another level. Whole, no Man's Sky. That's what it's called. No Man's, Man's Sky. There no is. Man's Sky. Uh, and it looks like Skyrim, but on a whole another level. Like literally, you're walking around, just checking stuff out, some crazy creatures, and next thing you know, you see this ship. You're like. Oh, this is a plane? This is a ship? What's going on? Then you jump in the ship and you just fly. And you're like, oh, cool, you're flying like in Grand Theft Auto and you're in the sky hanging out. Wait, he's still going into space. And there's a space battle going on. And he joined the space battle. And he's fighting and blowing ships up. And he says, oh, I'm done. And he goes back to the planet and starts fighting on the planet. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> Are you telling me we have the whole Earth now? I know it's not Earth, but we have a whole planet we can discover. And then the developers talking about, hey, we need you guys to help us discover the planet. Um, we can't, we can't find, you know, we can't, we don't even know everything that's happening. You know what I mean? I was like, what? <laughs> you guys don't even know what's in the game, and you made it. I want this game. 
Um, there's another one, another game, another album mention, Splatoon. Whole different side of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very cartoony um, game. Basically, you you're on teams and you have paintball guns, and the whole objective is to paint everything that you can. Uh, your character can hi- hide in the paint that you make, so you can actually camouflage yourself in the paint. And it's basically like a TDM, but a lot, you know, it's a rated G game, probably, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. rated for everyone's. It's for fun, though. It's ve- it looks very fun. Splatoon, check it out. Uh, it's basically based on percentages at the end of the match. Whoever painted the most part of the map. Huh. It, was, it looks really clever, and, like, it sounds corny, but watching him play, it was like, oh, that looks, that looks kind of corny. But then I couldn't take my eyes off yeah. of it. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited about that. Um, another thing I'm excited about is the GTA 5. I'm a big GTA player. I love playing GTA. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really sad they didn't come out with a new one for PS5 or PS4. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Now they are. Um, so my first question that they answered right away was, well, I put so many hours into my online. I don't want to get the new one. But guess what? They're transferring all your content over to your to your PS4 game, which makes sense because it's all on the PlayStation Network and it's all staying on the same network anyways. Uh-huh. But it just makes me so Knowing happy that. that I don't have to spend another 400 hours or however many hours I spent on this game uh-huh. to get back my pimp apartment and all my 10 uh-huh. luxury cars and all that other good stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, so basically, and oh, and I watched the Super Smash Brothers Live tournament. Oh my goodness! Some of these super, Ryan's some of these, excited. some of these ultimate <laughs> smashes. What are they called? The the not ultimate smashes, but um the final final yeah. smash. Some of these final smashes in the new game is amazing. Greninja does the ultimate Spider-Man move in from Marvel's Capcom. Like he does the exact same move. Greninja is Spidey in this. Like Greninja looks so sick. So I'm excited for Greninja. I'm excited for Pac-Man. I'm excited for Mega Man, and of course my boy Pika. So Pika's always old, but you know Pika Pika. Let's go. <laughs> So I just wanted to go through my E3, like, oh, but the whole big thing was I want to see more big world games and multiplayers, and that's what they're going to be doing now. Friends are going to be able to drop into my game at any time while I'm playing. There's not going to be friend requests I have to wait, not to wait in the lobby, all that BS. I get to go right into a game, and my friends can join at any time. When is Nintendo going to come out with the open world game? For Pokemon. For Pokemon. They need to. That's all. I think like, that's what we're to. just waiting on. Nintendo's, just... Nintendo's still in business? <laughs> This guy. this guy. I don't want to rage right now. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I think we're probably about. That's about. about right I just gotta want to add on something. Uh, as my good. Uh, the viral campaign. I've mentioned this before. For uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is really really good. Check it out. I've been on the Nerdy X uh, Facebook page. I've been introducing the characters with a brief bio. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Go look at it. Uh, Simeon flu is gonna Check take out over. Simeon flu. Yeah. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. It's a real. Quote, quote, real thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Actually, but it's it's so realistic that, man... Honestly, they got me, though. Did I can't I wait you, for the apes to Did I tell it? you guys about how yeah. they got me? Yeah, I think you told them before. At Comic-Con like, last year, at they, Comic-Con, were, they were doing... They were promo. passing out a little face mask, and I was walking around, and they give me the face mask, they give me a pamphlet on the simian flu, I read it, I immediately put the mask on, and I'm wearing the mask for the rest of the day, because I'm really scared of getting yeah. the simian flu. They got me. <laughs> <laughs> really good campaign, check it out. Uh, and then last, my bad was Harrison Ford breaking his or fracturing his foot ankle at, on the on the scene of Star Wars. So now all I'm gonna be looking for in the new movie is a limp. That's all I'm gonna look for. Then every scene like did he look right there? Did he look right there? Yeah. I'm looking for a slip up, JJ. So you better fix it. <laughs> my bad was that George Lucas has nothing to do with the Star Wars film. They caught TMZ caught him and they were asking him what he they were thinking about the screenshots and George Lucas was like. I don't have anything to do with it. Got in his car and... Reportedly after that, he actually uh, got in his car that turned to a helicopter, flew to the top of his bank vault, and dived in, not unlike Scrooge McDuck in DuckTales. <laughs> is that is that how the story went? He seems very disgruntled. And that's <laughs> sad for the creator of Star He's Wars. He's not disgruntled. He seems like it, dude. He's not disgruntled. He, seems, he was butthurt because of nah. the fan reaction after episode nah. one, two, and three. Nah. He, he has enough money dude. to buy him mini and, 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 and to me, 1, 2, and 3 is a really good if you watch them all together. Mercy. I personally don't. Mercy, right. we, better, we better stop this right now before... <laughs> you don't like 1, 2, and 3? <laughs> At all. At all. 1, 2, 3, what I was responding to someone on Facebook here. 1, 2, 3, what? Of Star Wars. Episode 1, 2, and 3. Oh. Uh, Phantom Menace. Uh, uh, what is that noise? What was the second one? I mean, I mean like, Darth Maul was cool. What was, it, what was the second one? Like, what was the second one? The first one was Phantom Attack of the Clones. Menace. Attack of the Clones was decent. And, Re- and Revenge of the Sith is a decent movie, dude. I, I liked I, Revenge of the Sith. I liked Revenge of the Sith. I can watch lot. that one over and over. Yeah, yeah. Revenge of the, the first Sith one I cannot watch over and over. 
It's so slow. Attack of the Clones is good too. I like Attack of the Clones. Attack of the the first I'm a one Star is Wars boring fan, though, so I like all of them. The first so, one is boring though. The if first you don't, one is. If you don't like five or six, you're not a Star Wars fan. Five or six? Five of six. If you don't like five of the six movies, you cannot consider yourself a Star Wars fan. Maybe you're just too much of a Star Wars I fan. I only like. No, I just really think I only if like you say four. You, I'm just saying, if you don't like two of the six movies, I cannot consider you a fan. That's I don't all. like four, dude, because I don't like Phantom Menace and I didn't like New Hope. But wait, wait, you don't like New you Hope? Like New the Hope? very first okay, one now I see, like now see that. That's I did not like. I it. can't be friends with you. Empire, Empire Strikes Back, all action. Uh, Return of the Jedi, all action. New Hope, it was too much downtime. I, it was the first one. It's literally the introduction to Star Wars. You're building. It's okay. <laughs> it's, I, I like four of the six. That's Decent. That's so, right. so I fall short of the of the nerd category. That's right, guys. Like That's right, guys. No, no, you fall short because this man just said he likes Attack of the Clones, but not A New Hope. I just want you guys to hear that. Attack of the Home. <laughs> actually, actually, you know what's funny? No, it's not. Yeah. But there's a guy who re-edited uh, A New Hope. It's called Star Wars Revisited. Uh, Ryan, remember we watched this. Yeah, it was good. It's actually very good. Like he 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 recut the film, so like the pacing's a lot tighter. The the fight All scenes the are a lot better. Are All the long I'm saying, boring I think parts. you'd watch it. I think you would like it. All the long boring parts. I mean, it doesn't oh, have. Oh, and the last thing, we got one more Facebook comment, and I like this girl is like killing it for me right now. She's putting up bringing up good points. What's her uh, name? Uh, Becca. She's really cool right now because she's coming up with like awesome things. So, anyways, Becca said. Um, at the rate Marvel goes, they'll start production on Miss Marvel in a couple years. So, right, just saying that alone opens my mind up to so many things because by the time 2017 comes, Marvel's going to be murdering the game. They're already going to complete their trilogy, right? Their trilogy will be done, or is it 18? Phase three will be done. Phase will Phase three be done? Yeah. Uh, at least Phase two is going to be done. Or for phase sure. two is going to be They're done. They're going to be so ahead of the game. I'm probably not going to care about DC at that point. I'm going to be like, we're in Phase two now. Mm. Right. But I didn't want to get too deep into it, but it was just a good point that's that a, that's Marvel's going to start being able to start bringing in right. other characters that are awesome that's right. that DC is not going to be able to do. And the only thing that DC has an advantage on right now is that they do own all their characters, and they can do crazy stuff if they want to. Marvel doesn't have to make movies. They got Netflix. Sorry. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, guys. We just did an hour, and this is Ryan uh, from Ryan's Comics. I'm Adrian Murphy, Prophet Alpha. And this is Theo. I want to say thanks to all listeners, guys. Hey, thanks, thank you, Becca, Becca. and the other people who were asking questions. It's yeah, cool. Uh, next time we'll try to get on a live streaming thing so you guys can comment and we can uh, get get to you guys quicker. Yeah. Uh, right now we're just it. we're just hitting people on Facebook. Uh, so thank you guys. And if you have any more questions or things that you want to do different, just hit us up and we will do that. We'll announce it. Take care. All right, thanks, Peace. guys.